The Sporting Lives is a new documentary premiering on Prime Video, following members of the Wakefield Trinity PDRL team as they travel to Australia to play against their compatriots from the Gold Coast Titans. Of course, there's much more to the story than that, and we'll hear from two of those who played on the trip. But first, here's the director, Luke Bauer-Massa. Uh, I um, helped out um, Wakefield Foundation. They did a kit launch for the PDRL team. And I forgot how I was introduced to it, but basically in my free time, um, I'd only moved to Brighouse quite recently and I wanted to get kind of more involved in sport in Yorkshire. And so I went and did the kit launch and then they asked me to interview a couple of the players. So I kind of went to their training games and interviewed the players just to talk about PDRL. And then Craig Shepherd explained to me that they were going on this trip the person that was supposed to be going to do some video content couldn't go, would I mind if I could go? And I said, yeah, I, I, I basically said I could, if I could try and raise some money so we could do a documentary at the same time. And I'm uh, friendly with a guy called Leo Perlman, who um, runs a company called 4173. And they did the Sunderland Till I Die documentary on Netflix. They do lots of great documentaries. And he, he basically said, yeah, we'll sponsor you so we can make this into like a half an hour doc. And, you know, and through that, I talked to Amazon Prime because I've done some work with them and they said, yeah, we'll, we'll host it, we'll broadcast it and try and raise some money for the foundation. Almost, a, it feels at the moment, when, uh, to use a cliche, almost a golden age of sports documentaries. So uh, obviously there's the big ones in America and kicked off by the 30 for 30 series on ESPN. What, what kind of inspirations have you drawn uh, into your work? Uh, I, think, I think documentaries as a whole, I think there's a new... Just on Netflix, I think people are realizing broadcasters that documentaries are have kind of made a return. Um, there was um, an amazing series on Netflix called The Defiant Ones about Dr. Dre and Jimmy Levin and about how they created beats. Um, and like you say, I mean, the Sun and I Die, I think, is incredible. Um, there is a lot of really, really good content out there, and I think even stuff like the Michael Jordan series, The Last Dance. I, the amount of people like myself who don't like basketball or, or not really have any knowledge of it who enjoyed watching it, it's because it's great stories. And I think um, that's what's come back now. And, and I think because there's so many broadcasters of Amazon, Netflix, Sky, that there is this new revolution of documentaries, which is great to watch. You have almost pigeonholed uh, things uh, too little there. It's not about sports documentaries, it's about the stories that they tell. And obviously you've got three great stories here to tell in these sporting lives. Yeah, um, I was really, I'd managed to spend time with all of the guys before we went um, and I knew their backgrounds. It was, it was a real kind of joy to, to kind of, to tell their stories because they're all so individual. And the one thing that I realised by, I spent a lot of time filming the Peter R team when I got back from Australia, is that every single person has an individual story. You can't pitch a whole um, physical disability into one thing. And the other thing that surprised me was about how, um, how physical physical disability rugby is and how passionate it is. I mean, Darren will always say that the most important thing is about people getting into the sport to help with their disabilities. And Darren's the captain of the team. But when he goes on the pitch, I mean, there's no one more determined than him. And, you know, I, I will be going back when we can to watch Peter out just as a spectator because it's a really, really good sport to watch. Yeah, it was once in a lifetime opportunity. It was, it was just great, obviously, because obviously as a child I dreamed about playing, obviously abroad in Australia. Um, and obviously when I had my injury, that bit got taken away. Um, but now, due to the PDR all scene and getting invited to go over to Australia and play, basically, I've I've had that chance to do it. Obviously, I was scared at first, obviously, because you get told that you can't play again. Then you basically a new concept comes out saying uh, you, you basically can play again, but just as a touch player, um, obviously, it's quite a scary time. So, obviously, <laughs> go, back, well, go, back to, go back to rugby. Um, but obviously, I went down for a training session, um, and obviously, I haven't stopped since. So, it's obviously, doing well. It's more physical than you actually think because obviously you get to see on obviously sometimes on the news they don't really put some of the big hits all over then when you're actually in a game when you're getting some of the biggest players running at you it feels like you're back into that rugby environment and you get the buzz of playing again. For instance in this story we didn't have enough 
time. But there was um, Connor's aunt, Sarah. Um, we interviewed her a lot, and she's a really important part of the journey that Connor's gone on, but also out in Australia. And I would have liked to feature her more because she's an amazing woman, um, but we just didn't have the time to do that. Um, which is why I think also, actually, I was speaking to Craig, I think we are going to put a version on YouTube because people outside of the UK kind of struggle to watch it, especially in Australia. So I think we are going to put a view of, uh, one on YouTube and I think along that we'll probably do some more interviews of the bits that weren't in the doc. The first training session that, that we ran at, at Wakefield for PDRO, um, there was, um, I think there was four of us there. Um, and now, obviously, we've got a team of, about 15 when everyone's fit. Warrington have got uh, about 30 players. Wigan are, are building and building. I think they're up towards 10, 15 players now. Leeds had a big squad last year. Um, so in, in that sense, um, it's grown a lot. We've had opportunities. You know, we've had two teams go down under now. Um, we've had, you know, the opportunity to play curtain raises at Super League games before the grand final last year. Um you know, we have come an awful long way. Now, I'm not naive at all, Richard. We, we've got an awful lot further to go as a as an arm of the sport. Um, but, you know, that that's just part of the natural, or I hope that's just not part of the natural uh, growing process. For me, I, I think what really didn't set in until until we got there was, you know, quite how how important and how, how once in a lifetime it was. Because obviously going to Australia was one thing, um, and then there were all the activities put on by by the Gold Coast, um, culminating in that game at the towards the back end of the week. And um, yeah, it was just um, it took a little bit of time for it to set in just how how big it was, I suppose. Because it's a documentary that we I, I went off to Australia with these you know three guys and Sarah. You're you're filming live, so you don't really know what the story is going to be until you get home and until you start editing. And the the kind of the point where I knew what the story was was. They did a, a talk for um, for veterans of all wars in Australia at, um, at this place just outside the Gold Coast. And it was Ben who said, if it wasn't for PDRL, he wouldn't feel comfortable talking about his disability. And Ben's a teacher. I mean, he's a primary school teacher. And if he's not comfortable talking about his disability, then surely that's, you know, that's a pretty major thing for a teacher not to be comfortable talking about. But through PDRL, he felt he was comfortable. And he, he said, I mean, I think it's in the doc, he says that he just, if it wasn't for PDRL, he wouldn't feel comfortable talking about it. And and the other two guys agreed. And they, I mean, Connor talks about it. He said even before going to Australia, he felt slightly ashamed of, you know, his disability. But then meeting people over there talking about it, it just kind of, there's a form of acceptance. And I hope that people who have a disability watch it and see how helpful PDRL can be and that everyone's going through something and maybe you can't see a disability on the outside like Darren but I think people should be a bit more respectful and kind. It, it seems on the documentary you talked about meeting Terry out there in Australia it seemed that that meeting him and his experience was a, a big a big thing for you. Uh, yeah because obviously I feel like in the PDRL scene it's not many people have Basically, I've had strokes, um, like similar to man. Um, so obviously, meeting a PDRL player who's had a stroke, and obviously, it was it was just good to hear his sad story. It made me feel more more confident about playing PDRL and more confident about my disabilities. I hadn't seen the guys for about four or five months, and then we had to do some narration at the studio in Batley, and Connor was just completely different. You just the way he the way he talked the way he talked about his disability the way he talked to me and I mean an extraordinary guy um, he, I mean the work he does his charity work is incredible but I don't feel like it's I didn't feel like as, as a filmmaker that I wanted to kind of you know pull on people's heartstrings I just wanted to ask these guys some pretty basic questions about how they you know, how they live their lives and how they, 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 they're involved in PDRL and they just gave honest answers. And I mean, the three pretty typical Yorkshire guys who just said what it was. And there wasn't any point where, there was that moment where I thought, oh, we're gonna have an inspirational ending. It was just, you know, it's almost the ending as the journey continues. And 
and I can't wait to watch them play PDRL when they can again, hopefully in the World Cup. It's sort of taking PDRL for me to be comfortable speaking about my disability. Um, and what I would hope is that by me speaking like that, me being out on the field, um, someone else doesn't have that same battle, if that makes sense, or that same that same worry. Um, you know, it is very much about showing that there is a, a pathway into um, rugby league. I filmed all of their games when they got back. There's a game that Wakefield played against Leeds, which was super competitive, really good to watch. And then in the final against Warrington, it was it was a great final, and, and, and Wakefield really unlucky not to get away with um, of winning that game. Um, and I'll be watching it again. You know, I'm I'm, I'm hoping that um, when the World Cup's on, there will at least be some games streamed or televised um, because that's like super important um, to, to to get the message out. Because I think a lot of people don't know about PDR, which is a shame. I feel like they can take away from the film that it shows people who have, who was kind of fairly embarrassed of their disabilities, um, showing that um, now we're absolutely. We're, we're overcome the embarrassment and that we are now proud of wearing a PDRL badge. We're proud to, proud to call ourselves disabled because it means we're not like anyone else. We're, we're an individual. Um, we, we do, I think we do it on the best we possibly can. It just, it just shows our motivation towards life. Um, so obviously like Dino, he had cancer and he got over that and now look, he's been to Australia. Um, um, obviously, then you get Ben. Um, he's now he's now a teacher, and obviously, if he, he, I know Ben was obviously he was scared. Um, obviously, with his disability, he, didn't, he always wanted to define people. Now, now he's a teacher. Um, so obviously, now I'm trying to inspire, inspire to become a paramedic. Um, he's basically, I think that documentary is just showing people that no matter what you're going through, there's always someone on your side and always you, your life will always it's basically in your own hands um and just just try and live life to the fullest because that's what we're doing